guys, welcome to Captain German Exploring YouTube channel. Today we have something incredible for you. We'll be talking about the underwater world of Crete. It's so amazing here that we've spent several days here. In total, we spent about 10 days there. Overall, uh, we filmed everything because uh, on just one screen there, uh, there's an incredible variety of fish and corals. Uh, it's one of the best places. Uh... Well, this is our favorite reef. It's the number one reef we've seen, at least I personally have seen in my life. It's the best so, reef. So, in the last video, we arrived at Krai, and as I promised, in this video, we're going to tell you about what's underwater here. It's really, really cool. Yes, there's a huge amount of fish here. Uh, the reef itself isn't deep, so we were snorkeling, but it's also home to some of the most popular dives. Because but, there's uh, a big, a big drop smile off is what with happens. lots of creatures. But there are uh, several, uh, several locations, meaning there are locations near the shoal, there are locations at the corner of the island, and each time, I mean, we we swam into a new spot. Uh, sometimes the current is so strong that you need to drift with the dinghy so you don't have to paddle back to it. And in general, there is always an enormous amount of fish at this, so it's just incredible. So, Sakulan, if you like diving, snorkeling in shallow water, you can stand ways deep and see everything or dive to 30 meters with tanks if that's the, if the kind of diving you enjoy. At greater depths, there are huge fish, commercial yes, species. Yes, there are endemics here too. And this is where we met manatees. Yes, well, yes, yes, that yes. That's exactly yes. how it was. Basically, commercial fish like wahoo, mackerel. These fish are huger, uh, uh, but uh, hunting is prohibited here because it is a national park. Seeing this half meter wahoo swimming next to you is always very very cool. Anyway, we sorted all the crucian carp here by their types. Uh, well, not all of them. Well, the most interesting But there ones. will be way more in the video than we mentioned, actually. And basically, we will tell you about each of them because we started studying all of this and learned so many interesting things. And now we dive in with uh, awareness because we understand what each fish does, uh, how it behaves uh, and why. Well, yeah, and in general, it's just really cool to watch them. And here we have the time to talk a little about our other favorite types of fish. These are trigger fish uh, or ballistidae. We call them trigger fish uh, for simplicity. Take, yeah? The title is interesting. Yeah, they have uh, this interesting uh, name because of their dorsal fins. Um, they have a hidden fin that they raise above their heads when they feel uh, threatened, uh, which you can see here. It means they are wary Moreover, of something. Uh, he raises the front. Dorsal there fin, are three spines. yes. Oh, Stom, it has three spines, but Mona sees spines eyes. And the three spines interlock in a way that, unless the fish wants to, the fin physically can't you be can folded only down. Break it. Yes, it can only be broken. And the most beautiful trigger fish of all is called pink tail trigger fish. I like its color. It's like a ballerina skirt, pink and black. Well trained. And here is another type of trigger fish called the clown trigger fish. They usually are introduced much deeper than um, there is every, uh, everyone else that is somewhere from 7 to 8 meters, but we were also lucky to film it. Did you know they can grow up to a meter long? Some species, yes, but most are around 20 to 50 centimeters. Here's a bit more of that uh, magnificent pine tail. Uh, I filmed them a lot because I really like them. You better also tell us what they eat. They eat my favorite mollusks, that is, uh, shells. Shellfish. Uh, I, uh, yes, they have big, strong teeth, and with these teeth, they can crack the shells of mollusks and uh, sea stars and bite off a piece of coral. In general, all of this is part of their diet. Usually, they uh, thought, uh, they swim alone, setake, uh, sometimes in pairs, and it is interesting and important to be attentive 
Uh, they are very territorial, and when the male guards the nest, they can, well, there can and be big problems because the uh, fish not a uh, uh, she will cut up. Yes, yes, yes. The alter ego, not just the titans, but the titans especially. We've even seen them charging at people, not just to buy, but to chase them away from their nest. But in some cases, they do bite and can even puncture neoprene. Many cases of them attacking divers. Uh, but you may so they see a diver and bite the face or wherever, and those bites are painful and leave serious wounds. Yeah, uh, just look at them. They're and they're so generally gorgeous edible. And they are edible, I'd say, but it's dangerous to eat them because they accumulate toxins in their bodies, which can cause ciguatera. Well, in general, I don't know. No, we personally don't need to reef fish uh, for this reason, because the reef acts uh, as a filter, it purifies the water by removing all toxins and heavy metals. Then the fish eat this, and then you eat the fish, uh, and it all gets passed on to you. Therefore, we try to avoid uh, eating reef fish. We don't try, we just don't eat it at all. Yes, of course, uh, and the one that even feeds on reef fish like barracudas, we don't eat for that very reason. But overall, we managed to capture some footage, and I, I, I liked how they clean themselves. There's, they often uh, swim up to some large flat coral, waiting for small fish to swim up to them and start uh, eating them various uh, parasites of them, or I've also seen how it just lies on its side and scratches against the coral. That's also a thing that is known how to clean the bottom for yourself before and the yeah, falling. scratching themselves, actually, they are it's somewhat skittish and there's one uh, an interesting species called the red tooth triggerfish. They swim in large schools, it's unlike most others that swim in pairs or alone. These form a, a huge group, uh, clearly feeding on something right out of the water. Probably some people like this floating garbage on the surface. I mean, if you see such a spot somewhere, then there's definitely something there. But well, you'll find a huge school of these red tooth trigger fish. They are interestingly named red tooth because of their reddish teeth, but they have a very distinctive, super beautiful, deep blue colors and an unusual fin shape. They're named specifically for their teeth for some reason. Though they have many other differences. Yes, yes. beautiful but very dangerous surgeon fish swimming. You can see it has those orange spines at the base of its tail. And this means that it is very determined and aggressive. It doesn't because like us very much apparently. When they are in such a calm uh, state, see, these spines are hidden. Here's another type of surgeon fish. There are actually a lot of them here at Rajampad. In total, there are about There are species, species and nine genera, meaning it is very large. Big family of fish. Uh, yes, I just... Um, uh, and here you can often catch several different ones in a single frame. Here's a whole school, for example, swimming by. They are also surgeon fish, just different species. By the way, uh, you know that they live both alone and in small flocks, groups and large ones. Well, here it seems to be a large group. Yes, and sometimes they... Um, 
but living near a small home oops meaning one male uh, well, and many females well here it looks like uh, either a very large school or just a giant I village like i think it's -like just group. a school in this uh, case yes in general these are interesting fish they are diurnal fish often very very brightly colored the uh, uh, they are very important for the reef because they eat algae that can harm some corals. That is, the algae grow covering the reefs uh, and because of that corals die. That's why these fish are very useful. Also, their diet includes plankton and small crustaceans as they live uh, among uh, these algae and eat them along with the algae. Sometimes they hunt them separately. Well, yes, uh, usually they range in size from 10 to 25 centimeters, but some can reach 50 centimeters, and some even reportedly grow up to a meter. We haven't seen those. Look, there's another uh, dangerous uh, By the way, did you know these uh, long-living fish? Some species uh, live in open water for more than 20 years. Cool, that's really awesome. Also, Saktao, um, they're actually juveniles, are completely different from adults. Uh, for one, they don't, as they don't have spines. By the way, some spines are, are venomous, uh, covered in toxic mucus. Uh, when they are retracted, they are harmless, uh, but when they scratch, uh, it's like a scalpel and injects the venom, uh, causing incredible well, pain. You need to keep a distance and not torment these magnificent fish. Look, they are even swimming with parrotfish here. It's interesting how absolutely different families often swim together in organized groups. And they live uh, not only on corals and reefs, but also on the sandy bottom, and they are spread across the Indo Pacific, Africa, Australia, Japan, and all the way up to Tuamotu, Kiribati, up to the very top. I remember, Boishi, we first encountered them on this uh, atoll where we were, where we had just fired a few shots, as it was called back then. Minerva we first saw Reef. such things on Minerva Reef. I remember it, we, we were swimming right and above in a French carpet Polynesia, of them. Weren't there any well, of maybe these? they were. We just started to pay attention to them for the first time. Like specifically, what kind of spines are these? What kind of dangerous fish this is? We are already starting to take this. Very very seriously, having analyzed all the videos in detail. We are already starting to take this very seriously. Having analyzed all the videos in detail, they can uh, sometimes be aggressive and territorial, but mostly, of course, they try to avoid contact. However, not always. So if you, uh, if you see such a fish, be careful, and it's better to keep your distance. Because someone might come out and beat you up, depending which cute bunny you cut. And uh, on this reef, we sometimes encountered large schools, sometimes solitary ones, a large number of fish known to everyone as dory fish. It's and from in search finding of Nemo. Nemo. Yes, this, this, this blue fish with the bright yellow tail and its blue color is so bright. It's practically neon. Like it's It doesn't glowing. even show on video because it's very profound and such that I don't even know how so to convey. Agree? It turns out that this is also from the surgeon fish family. And from the surgeon fish family, to, to, to those rhino fish with long noses, they're silly, yeah, but they're, they're also that, such uh, that's a fish, Dory. But, uh, she's an uh, aggressive at all. She doesn't attack. Not territorial, and they even keep them in aquariums. So they... Well, many fish are kept in aquariums, but I enjoyed chasing them around the Cree reef. These are huge, huge schools of fish called Sergeant Major. Their defense mechanism is interesting. When the sergeant major fish feels threatened, it's, uh, uh, it makes a distinctive clicking sound to scare the predator. Uh, additionally, they are known for their devotion to their offspring. The males guard and tend to the eggs, constantly fanning them with their fins for better oxygenation. They often gather in large flocks to hunt prey more effectively and protect themselves from predators. Such social behavior makes them noticeable and quite successful in survival. Their name, Sergeant Major, comes from their striped appearance. They, This is the coating. <laughs> These are apple letters. <laughs> the males and females look the same. Uh, they mainly feed on zooplankton and small algae with mercton and small algae, algae and such, they behave non-aggressively. And these are always such supergroup individuals. The male always incubates and guards the eggs laid by the female for several weeks. 
For several weeks during mating, he chases the female until he catches her. I see. Well, whatever that means. fish or blowfish. They are so slow. Interestingly, they can swim not only forward but also backward thanks to their fins. Uh, they also do not have scales but instead of scales they have spines. Uh, these spines uh, lay flat against their skin when they're calm but in danger the fish takes in water and becomes a large prickly she has ball. Special sacs near her stomach and she fills them, drinks this water and inflates to a huge size and all these spikes and thorns start sticking out in different directions. If she's eaten, she gets stuck in the throat of even big fish and they die from it. So it's a serious defense mechanism and they're also yes, poisonous. Yes, many of them are poisonous and the poison is found in their skin and often in their stomachs and liver. So these fish are generally quite well protected, which allows them to swim slowly, leisurely and not fear anyone around them. They aren't afraid of anyone around. They, they, uh, they have teeth, for four teeth that wear down uh, throughout their life. To do this, they eat various uh, mollusks. Absolutely with that. With Fangs, like don, don, don. yes, because with him they wear down these four incredible Well, teeth. actually, they're kind of cute, I like them, they have such big eyes, they always watch you with these eyes, they usually don't run away too far, just hide somewhere, maybe wait it out, but overall they are not super agile. Do you know what? <laughs> When they are in danger, they puff up so dolphins know that these fish have a toxin on their skin. Toxin. On the needles and they start playing football and enjoy it sticking out. There are about 90 species of fish in the wild. Some of them are freshwater as well, but we are here. And consequently only those in the salty one. They are also very territorial. In adult life, they are solitary creatures, meaning yeah, they never... Yeah, we met them one by one. No, actually, as adults, they are solitary. But remember when we were in Panama, in Panama City, right in the there bay where were we... were a few of no, them. No, there were several. They were all such small ones, like farfish. I even had them all in yes, the deanery. I think those were just... Yes. There was such a crowd there. Uh, there were hundreds of them in one place. It's generally interesting to watch them because they are in no hurry. One of our favorite kinds of fish is clownfish. They are great because there are so many species, uh, around 28. And uh, every time I think we've come across probably more than and half of them. We always spend a lot of time with them, trying to yeah. capture them on camera. They, they are, are so photogenic, photogenic and, amazing. and usually quite stationary. They live in symbiosis with anemones. There are also many different kinds of anemones and usually different species of clownfish paired with different Can anemones. you explain what symbiosis is? Because it's a really cool system. Very cool system. They have such a system of mutually beneficial living, that is, the anemone is poisonous. 
The tentacles contain stinging cells that are poisonous to all types of fish and can sting potentially fatally. Well, that's basically what it does. And with this, it actually feeds itself. It kills fish and they fall into the actinia, which then eats them. Yes, but Nemo fish have adapted by producing a special slime when stung so the poison doesn't reach their surface. Interestingly, uh, when a fish barely touches the actinia, it does it just a bit to understand the effect of the venom. Uh, depending on the venom, it produces antibodies and slime containing those antibodies. Uh, and the actinia uh, doesn't sting it. Well, yes, and the Nemo fish in turn help the anemones by firstly attracting other fish with their bright colors, which the anemone stings and feeds on, and ventilating water and removing anemone food remnants. Meaning those fish it hasn't managed to digest. Well, something like that. It turns out that they are always more or less around. It's interesting that every family of Nemo fish, clownfish, clownfish well, I call them Nemo fish because... Eleven, because... From the cartoon. Interestingly, each family consists of an alpha female, the largest fish. And usually the boldest one, then there's the beta male and the rest are of lower rank. So, initially, all the fish are born male, but if the main female dies or something happens to her, the beta male becomes female. And once it changes to female, it cannot go back to being male. I will look for interest. And the next largest male, he becomes the new beta male. It is also interesting that only the beta male participates in fertilizing the eggs, while the other males are not reproductive. Waiting on the sidelines, interestingly, after the eggs are laid, the male takes care of them. He often kills and eats some eggs that lack oxygen or are in an extremely disadvantageous position from the start. Also, uh, uh, unfertilized or ones. unfertilized ones, yes, in general he tracks this until the very hatching of the sailors. And they are very territorial. It's risky to, um, and they practically never leave their anemone because they have immunity strictly to a specific species and no other. They say that they can even attack and bite, uh, but that didn't happen to us. They just tried to scare us, jumping suddenly from the anemone. But it's very funny to watch. So never touch a clownfish. Also, the clownfish is a very social fish. And it is interesting that they communicate with each other with such clicks and claps. And here we have a small clownfish. It is interesting that this is a very young individual which in appearance strongly resembles Nemo. Mainly by color, by shape, of course, it is clear that this is someone else. And in terms of behavior too, it is clear that this is someone else because they are not attached I to any anemone but swim away from I initially it. thought it was no, a clownfish. No, fish. it's a completely different kind of fish. It's interesting that such coloration, a small specimen, completely changes its appearance and color as it ages and grows.
Well, and our next character is a sea needlefish. Well, no, it turns out it's not a seahorse. Uh, we thought all along that these were seahorses, just uh, straightened out. Uh, but it turns out they're close relatives, but not, not sea in horses. some separate they family. They are in the same family as seahorses, but a little different. They're cool because they're at the bottom and completely invisible. <laughs> they sit there on the rocks and when the snow disappears you swim past them and it's very hard to notice them Keep a close it is eye. necessary to stop stop and start looking at what is under the coral well nevertheless we met them quite often i even saw them on the voyage right in the sand and here there is a whole pair and one of them seems it to be looks slightly like pregnant there's a chance there will be these little eggs and it's kind of they cool. carry eggs or give birth to live ones but it's unclear, at least some. It's unclear, interesting. Actually, I saw that seahorses give birth to fully formed seahorses. Well, yeah, sea maybe he's just a little chubby, maybe he just over ate. Maybe it over ate, ate another seahorse. So we met uh, a turtle like this, we actually met uh, many of them. This is one of them. Uh, they remind us of a green turtle, but this is not a green turtle. This is a hawksbill turtle. Hawk that is, this turtle like is called uh, the hawk. Is a kind of a hawk-like bird. Uh, it is slightly smaller than a green turtle. They are very, very rare and are on the verge of extinction mainly because people often hunt them for their shells. But that's completely illegal. It is e illegal and banned, which banned almost everywhere in the world. But nevertheless it happens because their shells are made into beautiful decorations, jewelry and various accessories. In general the turtle is endangered because of this, but they are not caught here. What enemies does it have? They have enemies. Their main enemy is men, of course, and also sharks. Octopuses, larger fish species. Generally speaking, in nature, it has very few enemies because of its tough shell. Basically, no one attacks it. Why does it have that name? Because it has a beak that sticks out with a hook that helps it gouge out food. Various delicacies from corals. Uh, she mostly loves to eat sea sponges, sometimes even poisonous ones. And this is very beneficial for the reef because you by digging out these sea sponges, she leaves behind lots of particles and opens access to various delicacies for other fish. I know that they are a big problem for pearl factories. Yes, we've seen that mostly when they grow oysters at pearl factories, they have these special multi-layered metal nets specifically to protect against these magnificent turtles. Interestingly, they reach adulthood at 20 to 35 years old, so it takes that long before a turtle starts reproducing. They reproduce twice a year, and that's the only time they meet other turtles. The rest of the time, they live alone. Interestingly, when they are still young, they mainly live and move around in the open ocean and closer to adulthood, they spend most of their time on reefs. But generally, this period during which they migrate lasts up to four years. Yes, and yet when they finally mate, and we've seen this happen when we, we arrived. Yes, it. we even showed it, and in general it's very cool. They have some kind of a prison there. A bunch of small things, two or three turtles usually, we didn't even understand at first and got scared. What were those sounds? What was happening there? We thought maybe a turtle got caught in some kind of trap, but it turned out no. This is definitely not a trap. Not a trap at all. And they lay eggs somewhere nearby on deserted beaches. At night, they emerge, which takes a lot of effort digging a hole all night, laying these eggs, and then for 60 days these eggs develop and hatch.
How many eggs do they usually lay? Well, around 100 or so in different regions, by the way. It varies. These are turtles that live in the Atlantic and beyond. Well, around 100 or so in different regions, by the way, differ. These are actually turtles that exist in the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. But Atlantic individuals, their life cycle, their habits differ slightly from those living in the Indian Ocean. And what is the lifespan of these turtles? This is uh, completely unknown. I did not find this information. So if they reach adulthood only in their 20s, then they probably live a long time. We had such beautiful turtles swimming with us. So uh, she wasn't afraid of us at all. Like, yeah, you know, she just let us come close. She has her own interests there doing her own thing and we were just swimming nearby. Naturally, we didn't touch her because we prefer wild nature. You know, not to bother much, but we swam nearby, watched, uh, took some photos. So he enjoyed this beautiful turtle we met, which is from the Red Book and on the brink of extinction. Yes, you can often see them in these places. They sleep under the corals. Uh, when I swam at Amy, I saw several times and they were little ones, you know, with a shell about 50 centimeters, kind of teenagers, you could say. And you just peek somewhere, there's a little turtle. Catapite, resting okay. under a coral like that. In the deep blue sea, she glides. Majestic shell, she hides inside. Graceful as the wave she rides Underneath the ocean tide Kai reef her endless home Where coral castles she does roam Nature's colors brightly known Cross the sea for white as low Oh turtle in the ocean bright Guardian of the reef by night General, yes, they are cool. So here we have the most frequent inhabitants on the reef. These are parrotfish. They is the largest diverse family here, and in both the Indo-Pacific and the Atlantic. This is generally the most uh, common fish in the world. Really. Yeah, yeah, they're always there. Even if there are no other fish, these will be there. They are called so because of their beak, which is formed of dental plates. This beak grows with them throughout their lives because they use it very actively and scrape corals with it. There are about 95 species. Wait, I read that it's 350? 350 was, was what scientists used to think because these fish have absolutely amazing physical differences, males, females. And, and, uh, and young fish. They all look absolutely different in different stages of life. And not only that, when they are still young, they are mostly females. And as they grow older, they turn but into males. not in the majority. It's all like this, they are when they are born, right? Some species even have those who, on the contrary, are initially boys and become girls. But the overwhelming majority of species are initially girls and with age become... Tell me how they differ because it would be interesting to know when someone is swimming on the reef to consciously understand well, that this little one is a girl. These green, green, blue ones, of, uh, uh, often with pink between the scales or with pink tails and just bright blue are always boys. 
Girls are usually pale colors. They can be pale red, uh, pale brown, gray, yeah. brown, yes. And interestingly, they primarily swim in huge, huge groups. They have this period when they swim and eat. The sun you see flying off of them, that's their poop because they scrape algae and other vegetation off the reefs, but some coral particles also get in. They poop out in a day, up to 250 grams of sand, and in a year, up to 90 kilograms on average. These are the biggest contributors to that beautiful white sand you see on tropical beaches. All thanks uh, to also interesting, they gather in these groups uh, precisely by size, not by any other principles, just by the size of the fish. Well, yes, the adults swim. Also interesting, when they swim and nibble on the corals, it makes such a sound that even underwater, many, many meters away, you can hear it. So you can hear a crunch, crunch, crunch look around and see that the school of parrotfish is swimming. Also, uh, I know that their teeth grow throughout their lives. Another interesting feature of these fish is that they lay eggs directly into the water and it just floats in the water and becomes part of the plankton. Then it settles on the coral reef itself and uh, it stays there until the little pirate fish start hatching. The largest parrot fish are the humphead parrot fish with a large hump on the head growing to 1.3 meters in length. We often met them here, but they usually swim in smaller groups. However, on Wayag, we did meet such large groups. Actually, this type of fish is very important for coral reefs all over the world but especially for the Great Barrier Reef in Australia because they contribute to the healthy growth of corals. When corals are covered with sponges or algae, the reforming corals can no longer grow. Thanks to these fish, they scrape off all the excess, eat it and thus make the corals healthier. But they don't nibble on the corals themselves? No, they don't, they, they don't nibble on the corals. They nibble off everything from the corals. And sometimes when you're swimming, you can see such scratches. That's from their beaks.
move on to the next section with the brightest, uh, most beautiful and diverse fish, butterfly fish. You can find these fish on practically every reef here and there are very many of them. Many species, about 130 species and 10 genera, they are perch-like fish. They are most often found alone or in pairs. Pairs are formed for life. A male chooses one female and then they live together. They are very attached to one place. They don't migrate anywhere, but they guard their territory quite zealously. They chose one place and that's their place. They are diurnal fish, primarily found in the Indo-Pacific, but some species are also found in the Atlantic Ocean. They mainly feed on invertebrates, which they extract from crevices and small hiding places. Sometimes they also eat parasites of the skin of larger fish. Juveniles have the same coloration as adults, and their length is on average from about 6 to 30 centimeters. Small but always very bright. They have such rich colorful patterns, very cool fish. All are more or less triangular. The next on our magnificent list of fish is the fish known as horned zanclus, also called the Moorish idol. It's a very unusual fish shape but quite common. Here on the reef, there are many of them, and they are often mistaken for butterfly fish due to their shape and coloration. This fish is unique in its genus. They usually swim alone or in pairs. The pairs form for life. The, the male is brighter and slimmer than the female. We often encounter them in pairs. I have a separate collection of paired fish and this one is included. If you see such a group of fish, it is usually young individuals. They can also swim in larger groups. Their diet mainly consists of sponges, algae and coral polyps. They spawn in the evenings, meaning a pair of fish rise up and start releasing their eggs. The eggs then float in the water column along with plankton until the fry hatch from them. That means there is no parental well, care. Eggs not there. Listen, I've also heard that they not only live in pairs but also in harem groups. That happens too, I guess. But we've seen them more often. Information suggests that a harem group consists of five to ten females and one male. Interesting. If a male meets another male, typically he wants to uh, start a fight. And this fish is actually the prototype from the cartoon uh, Finding Nemo, the fish named Gil. Another very beautiful family of fish is the angelfish. They too are usually super brightly colored, such flattened ones from the sides, or for more rounded shape. Their size ranges from 6 to 60 centimeters. There are 85 species of fish in this family. Their juveniles differ so much uh, from adults that scientists used to classify them as different species. Uh, even the body shape changes completely. They mainly inhabit uh, the Indo-Pacific, though some species are also found in the Atlantic Ocean. They usually live in pairs or harems, meaning one male with several females. Uh, they are also very territorial fish and uh, they defend their habitat from other individuals of their species. Young individuals may be left alone by the male uh, who allows them to stay in his territory. Uh, for adults, their territory can extend to 
uh, 1,000 square meters, which is very large. Uh, for smaller ones, sometimes it's just one or two corals. Yeah, it depends on the species and the size of the fish. They are usually very aggressive towards their kind and chase each other off with clicks and quite aggressive and dynamic behavior. Uh, Fish in this family have very different feeding strategies. Some are omnivores, meaning they feed on algae, polyps, small animals like shrimp and more, while others have a more modest diet, eating only sponges and algae, for example. Well, friends, uh, we made this huge video on self-scouting. Actually, this is one of the most complicated videos because identifying, separating all these fish swimming around was quite challenging. Well, that was quite it, challenging. It's useful because uh, in addition to telling Are you this, we'll back clear, there? but besides telling you all this, we learn ourselves. And for example, with each such video, when we dive underwater, we become so much more aware and understand what's happening around us. Like if before we just saw a fish soup where a huge number of fish were swimming around you, now we understand, oh, this is such a fish and this is a fry. And Yes, we now know a little bit about some of them, but the point is this reef is just something incredible. It was the richest reef on our way. There are several separate... We'll tell you all about them. We have everything recorded already and we're working With on... With the largest material. variety of species, it's just a dream place. And I personally want to go back there as soon as possible. Well, I can 100% recommend this place to anyone who loves the underwater world as the best voyager. So, uh, friends, hit the like button, share this video. I think such a little manual for Karasiem will be interesting to everyone who dives and who just loves to dive in a beautiful reef. Subscribe to the channel, check the bell icon. And next week, we'll continue our journey and show you some really cool and other places. Leaves? Yes, other there leaves. can still be IME, my favorite, another one, Arboric. Yeah, top three places on our journey. Cree, Arboric, and Emmy, the favorite. So, friends, don't miss our next videos. And this video has come to an end. Bye.